Hi guys, welcome back to Bookish Weekend. My name is Brooke and today we are doing my July wrap up. So in July I read a total of 10 books, I think. Let me just check that. Yeah, I read a total of 10 books. Um, it was a mixed reading month, that's it, it's average. Um, there were some 5 star reads though, some 4 stars, some 3 star. Um, I have a 2.75. I think was my last school. Um, so yeah, let's just get into it. I know this is really late, it's like the 7th of August filming this, um, which means it'll be even later when this goes up. Um, but I've been busy. It's been a month. It's been a, it, the end of this month has been a thing. So better late than ever, right? So I'm gonna keep telling myself. But yeah, let's just get straight into the books. So the first book I read this month was Legendary by Stephanie Garber. This is the sequel to Caraval. Um, I listened to this on audiobook and I gave this, I gave this four out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really solid sequel. If you don't know Caraval, the first book in this series follows two sisters, Tala and Scarlet, and they enter this competition, um, carnival like quest game, to win a wish from. Legend, the makeup of Car um, Caraval. This book, which basically, I'm not going to tell you what it follows because spoilers for the first one. But I did think this was, was a very solid sequel. I did really enjoy it. I highly recommend the audiobooks for this book because when I started reading Caraval, I couldn't get into the writing style in the physical format. So the audiobooks were the perfect way to go for me because this is a really great book. Um, it's so magical and whimsical, also quite dark. Um, so yeah. I really enjoy this one. The next book I read in the month of July is Onyx and Ivory by Mindy Arnett. This follows our main character Kate and she is a wilder or some sort of wild magic, I can't remember what they're called. Um, something like that and she can like feel animals thoughts. Um, this type of magic is banned in the kingdom but they have these monsters that come out at night called night drakes but one day they are found during the day. Um, and they attack the prince. Uh, Kate ends up running into the prince and helping them um, trace down this mystery of this type of magic, um, these monsters, and what's going on in the kingdom, trying to save them from an oppressive rule. Um, so yeah, I gave this book five out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. It is quite a big book. I got this in my June Fairly Loot, maybe? May Fairly Loot, I'm not entirely sure. One or the other. Um, this was a very good big surprise to me. I loved the writing style, I loved the magic, I loved the characters, I loved everything about it, and I can't wait for the sequel to come out soon. Next I read is Amy and Roger's Epic Detour by Morgan Matson, and I gave this book 3 out of 5 stars. I know everyone loves Morgan Matson's writing, as do I. I've now read all of her books except for her newest one, Save the Date, um, and I've loved most of them. I think I gave most of them 4 out of 4, out of 5 stars, or even 5. Um, but this one just was a bit of a letdown for me. It was a good, solid, fun, contemporary, um, with some more serious undertones. But I I know it's her debut novel, um, so I probably should have been expecting a little bit less from it. But it did just kind of let me down a little bit after reading all of her other ones. So maybe if you haven't read any more Gamatson books left yet, pick this one up first and then move on to her other books. But it was fun. It was holding like. So it had like song lists and little like scrapbooky bits as well as the main story. So that was really fun, but overall it was a bit of a letdown for me. This book follows Amy and Roger who um this this book follows Amy who hasn't been in a car, hasn't been able to drive a car since her dad's car accident, um, where he died. And she has to move house, which involves travelling, so her mum gets Roger to help Amy get from A to B, but on the way they decide to take a little bit of a detour, um, a bit of fun, a lot of like self growth, um, also romance obviously. So yeah, it was a fun book and I do recommend it, but it was just a bit of a look down for me. The next book I read was The Story of Tracy Beaker by Jacqueline Wilson. This is a book about a young girl who is in, fo in a child home, um, foster care in the system. Um, if you're British you know Tracy Beaker. There was a TV show that I grew up watching and I'd never actually read the book. 
Um, but Tracy's just a fun, mischievous character. I do want to read the rest of the series. This is a middle grade book. Um, it's just about her, like, trying to get adopted and all of that stuff. Um, Tracy's just so cheeky and fun and from like a psychologist's point of view it's very interesting to read about Tracy and like how she behaves. Um, so like seeing how she behaves, like when she gets angry but she's actually sad and like seeing the psychology, psychology behind that, that probably made no sense but hopefully you understand me. Um, but yes, I gave this book 4 out of 5 stars, it was just a fun middle grade read that I think every British person's probably read um, as a child or at least seen the TV show. Um, so yeah. The next book I read was Winter Song by S.J. Jones and this is a labyrinth retelling. I love labyrinth. I have a poster of it here, there, right there. Um, it's one of my favourite films. So I didn't know anything about this book except for it was a labyrinth retelling when I bought it because that sold me straight away. But this book was such a letdown. I ended up giving it 2.7 out of 5. 2.75 out of 5 stars and even that was being generous. I loved the beginning of this book and I loved the ending of this book but other than that it was kind of bad and when this book is like quite big that's a lot of middle to get through that you don't like um so yeah that was a bit of a letdown but I might pick up the sequel. I have got the sequel because I brought them together. It's a duology um but I don't know yet. It's such a letdown. The romance was cringy and problematic um see it was just a book about obsession it was just obsession oh, there's obsession with everything obsession with the romance and music and every little thing it was just ob obsession and I like poetic writing but this was too poetic you got to the point where you didn't understand what was going on you don't actually know if the two main characters actually get together like the only way they actually define that they actually you know did it is by her bleeding so that was a bit dodgy to me, made me a bit uncomfortable reading it and you just never know if they actually like were just kissing or actually went further than that and it was just it was just too much I didn't understand it, the relationship was problematic, I loved the lore and the world and the goblins um, and the ending but other than that it was a bit of a letdown so then I read Lola Rose by Jacqueline Wilson I'm going trying to read all of her books over time and could buy them all um, and so forth but we'll see how that goes. So this is the second one I have picked up and this follows Janie um, but when Janie and her family have to leave her abusive father she gets a chance to create a new character for herself and she calls herself Lola Rose but Lola's new so-called life isn't all that great as it seems to be and so it's just about her um, dealing with these issues and I gave this one 3 out of 5 stars again this was a fun middle grade read I didn't like her mother um, I don't know if you were meant to like her mother but um what was that? there was like slight diversity in it um, I don't really like the characters but they're realistic to how a lot of families are in Britain and the situation um, so that was really nice even if I didn't quite like them and you didn't fall in love with them um, I didn't like how it constantly talked about weight, but again, I guess it made it kind of realistic, but at the same time I didn't like it, it kind of made it a bit bad for me, um, but I did actually enjoy this book, the rest of it, um, I liked the character development, and it was quite an important read, I think, obviously a lot of children go through the stuff like this, so it was very, it's very cool to have a book like this out in the middle grade community, so children can read books like them, um, so yeah, that was... That was it was okay. It was okay. It was, three, it was a three out of five star read, so but then the next book I read in the month of July is No I Can't Even by Simon James Green and I gave this five out of five stars. Um I love this book so much as you can tell. Um I did actually I did actually write um film a book review and a book talk on this book. There's a spoiler free bit at the beginning and then if you would read this book there's a little spoiler thoughts at the end. Um, so I'll link that down below if you want to check it out. This book was funny, it was ridiculous, it was amazing. I wouldn't change anything about it. Um, so this book follows Noah and he has a best friend called Harry. And when his... he just hasn't had a great life, he's really unpopular. His mum did the Beyonce tribute act which is so embarrassing. And when his best friend Harry kisses him it basically turns his life into utter chaos. 
So it was about all the ridiculousness that ensues from that. Noah trying to get his heads around this thing that happened with Harry. Um, it was so funny, so great. I really do recommend that you check this out. I met Simon James Green at Yelk and he was so kind and so lovely. So please pick up this book. I loved it. Then I picked up Lost Boy by Christina Henry and this is a Peter Pan story. It's about how Captain Hook became Captain Hook and I gave this book... I gave this book 4.5 out of 5 stars but I would, but I would contemplate giving it 5 out of 5 stars. I loved this book so much. I loved the characterisation of Peter. Nothing could make me hate Peter but because I love Peter so much just from like other things that I've seen of him. But yeah, this book was so unique and I did like seeing this different perspective on Peter. Um, so yeah, it was a really, really fun retelling. Um, I'll read anything on Peter Pan. But yeah, this one was super cool. Then I read Daughter of the Burning City by Amanda Foody and I gave this one 5 out of 5 stars. I loved the world, I loved the characters, I loved the writing, I loved the character development. Um, our main character grew up so much in this book and it was so interesting to see. I loved the storyline and the mystery behind it. This book follows... Oh, what's her name? Serena? Serena. Um, and she is an illusion worker in the Festival of Gomorrah, which is like this big circus carnival thing. Um, and her illusions are like her family to her. But one day her illusions get, um, start getting killed off. And it's about her trying to find out who's killing them off and how, because she thought since they're illusions they could never die. So it's a bit of a fantasy, mystery sort of book. And it is filled with representation. Our main character is bisexual. The love interest is asexual or demisexual, I think. There are lesbian characters, there are so many queer characters in this, it's just amazing to read, and I loved it. Um, so yeah, 5 out of 5 stars, please pick up this book as well, I know so many people love it and the hype is so well deserved. And then the last book I picked up in the month of July is Rebel of the Sands by Alwyn Hamilton. Um, I met her as well at Yelp and she was amazing, I gave this book uh, 4 out of 5 stars. This book follows our main character Imani and she is a gunslinger. In this world where women are sort of second class citizens and she wants to leave this her, her town called Dustwalk and try and get a new life for herself but she ends up getting wrapped up with this other guy and finds herself at, at the heart of a rebellion um, and so it's about that is a part of the trilogy I did really enjoy it I loved the like deserty theme to it I loved the badass characters I loved um, like the squad of characters near to the end of this book the magic system was pretty cool as well, so I definitely enjoyed this one as well. So that's it for today's video guys, if you enjoyed it give this video a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below and I will see you guys next time. Bye!